Hi, I'm RK here and welcome to my next video. Today we're gonna talk about projecting a mesh to a surface. Previously, in the, in the previous video, we talked about setting a decal size to a size of a mesh. So uh, this was a foundation for this video. So make sure you watch it before this one, unless you already watch it, then keep going. Uh, a quick recap, what did we do? Uh, basically, we made it possible for a decal to automatically adjust to the size of a mesh. So when you have a blueprint and you have a mesh and you add a decal, it's basically this, right? So, so this box, you have stripes, whatever, and you kind of have to rotate it and uh, set the decal size to what you want, but then you uh, make a different mesh and you want it to adjust, but it doesn't, so you kind of have to scale it and uh, do everything manually. And there is really not, no way to make it automatically. Of course, you can uh, set relative 3D scale and, and whatever, but I don't like it. So I, I made a way to actually set the decal size at runtime, at construction script, at whatever. And when we plug this in, then it automatically adjusts. And whatever mesh we have it, we have here, then it, the decal size will just set this size to the size of a mesh. And this, all of that, was uh, necessary for me to actually carry on with this video. And in this video, we have this. So that torus is no longer 3D floating in the air, but it's actually on the floor, on the mesh. And when we run the simulation, I actually made a little animation so you can see that uh, this little torus is uh, working, sorry for FPS, but for some reason I have two of those. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I swear it's Unreal Engine 5.4 has, has, has some issues with performance. I don't know what that is, but uh, there, there is something there, okay? So when we run a simulation, the torus uh, kind of scales, just the mesh and the decal scales with it. So very simple stuff. And when we look at the torus, the torus is actually also rotating. So it's not just a texture. Well, it's kind, it kind of is, but it's not just a texture that is uh, kind of projected to a surface, but it's actually a, a real um, object that you can move and change at runtime and do whatever you want with it. Like, yeah, maybe we want it here on this floor. No problem. And uh, yeah, it kind of is simple to do, but I don't think people actually know about it. And uh, when you try to look online, it's the same case, case as in all of my videos. You try to find something online and there is absolute wasteland. <laughs> like nobody is talking about it. And uh, everybody is talking about actually rendering something to uh, to a surface, maybe a scene capture, but nobody actually talks about rendering a normal mesh. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I I'm, I just suck at looking, which is totally could be the case. But uh, whatever. Here's the video. Here's the tutorial. Uh, how do you project that torus to that mesh? It's actually super, super simple. Uh, I don't know if we should do this step by step if or or not. Maybe let's just deconstruct this blueprint because why not? Uh, it's called project projecting actor because it's just that. And in that projecting actor, you of course have the animation that is making the torus spin, but everything is on, in construction script. So this part you already know because uh, this is test decal. This is the decal function. And the rest, well, to make that torus actually appear on the floor, we first, first thing we need to do is make a decal. That decal is, of course, projecting anything we put there uh, onto the surface. So we have a decal material. We set the size to the static mesh. We have a scene capture component that captures that static mesh. 
and that uh, capture, so that texture render target is basically uh, transported to the decal material. And let's uh, kind of deconstruct the code. What do we do here? Uh, we have the scene capture component to D. We set the ortho width to uh, basically double the size of a side of that mesh. So it covers the whole mesh nicely. And then we have a dynamic material instance. The nice thing with this is that you don't really have to get the index of a material or whatever. It's just one function. Just set DMI, save it, done. Then we create a render target because we don't want to have uh, a single render target or make a multiple render targets for every blueprint. So we just create one dynamically and we pass the size from, uh, from box extent. And of course that box extent is not super big. Uh, so we have to kind of multiply it so we have a better resolution. If we have the resolution of, uh, of one, then it's just this, right? Because that's how many units we have and that's how many uh, are in the resolution of that, of that texture. If we double it, then it immediately gets better. And I think the kind of quality, nice quality caps at five and above five, it's not very noticeable. So, uh, yeah, five good. If you want some more performance than, than three, it's also not so bad if you don't stand super close to it and it should be fine. Uh, next thing we do uh, after making that render target, of course, RGBA 8 is enough, but you can also do the default RGBA 16F and 32 probably won't work, but I, I didn't test it, just, just a guess. Uh, then we save it uh, to scene capture component to the texture target. So we basically have this uh, scene capture component has texture target that it needs to write to. And uh, it, we, we just leave it empty and uh, programmatically basically uh, hook, it, hook it up with that render target we just made. Uh, then we do something interesting uh, because we don't want that scene capture to capture everything, right? We just want it to capture uh, the static mesh we uh, we just made here in that in that blueprint. So we go to scene capture component 2D, and we need to set primitive render mode to use show only list because if you render scene primitives it renders everything if you use show only list then anything that is on that list will be rendered and i think previously it was kind of accessible from this panel but it, for some reason it's not so you have to just kind of take this uh, show only actors get this array make an array and and put that I put self basically in it because this is actor, this is not components. Uh, so anything you put in that component, any mesh, it will be visible. And then we get that dec decal DMI and maybe let's, let's look at what is in that material. Th this is literally the material. <laughs> like it, it could even be that just texture sample parameter to D, but I made projection as a texture object because I kind of wanted to experiment with uh, other things we can do. And some are only available with just a text object, but it's it, it really no biggie. Uh, you can use it to, to uh, input in a texture sample. You can use the pure texture sample and just do this. Uh, we do one minus because um, the, um, the scene capture basically inverts the opacity for some reason and we cannot change it. So this is the only way we can fix it. Just one minus the alpha. If we don't, then the only thing that is invisible is the uh, the mesh. So if you only capture the mesh in skin, scene capture and that mesh is invisible, then it's just nothing. Okay. 
So we need this to capture the mesh. It's a kind of long, a long explanation, but whatever. And then we, of course, get that decal DMI, uh, make a project pro parameter name as projection, which is this, and we input the uh, This is, yeah, the, just the texture target. I kind of got confused because target, target, and whatever. Uh, should be probably self or something. I don't know. Sometimes Unreal in, is confusing, but yeah, practice. <laughs> uh, so we uh, plug texture target to that parameter, and we basically done. This is, this is the construction script. And the other thing that you might want to do uh, is checking if you want perspective and orthographic because it changes uh, how the torus is presented. If you do the bro uh, perspective projection type, then you need to keep in mind that uh, the height of scene capture component to the matters. So if we uh, kind of put this higher, then torus gets smaller, right? But if we choose an orthographic one, then the height doesn't matter, and it's just the torus. But you kind of can see the sides, which is which might not be desirable, but you know, pick pick the type for your purpose, right? I'm gonna pick perspective because, uh, yeah, it's good for me. And uh, let's move on. Other things you need to kind of set up. Uh, I don't think I changed anything more with scene capture, but I definitely changed with static mesh because if we are making a static mesh, right, uh, that we want to project to a surface, we don't really want it to be visible outside, right? We just want that projection, not the, the actual static mesh. So we kind of go. Uh, to the collision, we of course disable the collision, overlap events, everything, cast shadows, of course, and to make it actually invisible to the user, uh, we, this is kind of optimization, like you can leave it on, it probably, it's probably good, decals, it's invisible anyway, so whatever. And uh, the important thing is visible in scene capture only. And that flag is basically making uh, making the scene capture component the only component that can see that mesh. And we need that. So if you would uh, kind of disable the visibility or hide this in-game, that wouldn't work because the uh, scene capture would not see that. And uh, only owner C doesn't actually work for some reason. Um, I mean, I tested it. It kind of seemed like it should work, but it doesn't. So just don't don't use it. And visible instant capture only is the option you want if you want to hide that mesh. And that's uh, basically it. Uh, that's a very simple way to kind of combine render targeting decals and, and stuff to make a very simple projection of of a mesh to a surface and. Another optimization that you can do is uh, you kind of have to ask yourself if you want this mesh to be moving. Like, is this mesh movable? Because if this mesh is movable and it will be animated and stuff, then you need every uh, every frame regeneration, right? Every fr every tick update, and it's actually just an option here. Uh, so capture every frame. If you don't want this to be animated and just static, then make sure this is off because optimization. And it it will literally update every frame and capture what it sees to that render target if you don't check this off. So just make sure you, uh, you know, use this when necessary. And capture of movement is just like when it moves, then it updates. If you make it just static, then you can probably also make this uh, false. But also remember that when you start the game, it has to update once. 
right? So you probably should go to begin play if you don't capture on every frame and then capture scene and do this just once on begin play and you're good. So yeah, that's, that's my little tutorial. It's actually a part two of my trilogy because uh, the next video is going to be even bigger and cover even something more crazy. But uh, let's not get ahead of, uh, ahead of ourselves and leave it at that. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it will not be very soon. <laughs> I, I still have research to do, okay? Uh, so that's it for this video. Leave a like, leave a sub, leave a comment. Um, tell me what I did wrong, how you liked my code and all of that great stuff. And the reason you're probably wondering why is my scene so bright is because of that PPM cell shading, which I'm kind of experimenting with, but we can just disable it going to post process volume, post process and just doing zero. And that's our normal scene. Well, I kind of I kind of like this. Like very nice, bright cell shading. You can see everything. Nice for testing. I think pretty cool shader to have on the development build. Okay, that's it from me. Hope you have a lovely evening or whenever you are watching this video and see you next time. Bye-bye.